Hello, everyone. Another wonderful Friday. We're into February. The month, the exciting month that we have all been waiting for and, and, and working towards. Phenomenal February that this truly will be. So much going on. I think macroeconomically, that's just very interesting. That's really kind of posturing us to really have such an awesome launch uh, when it comes to the timing of, of where we're existing in the market. Uh, so just the, that quick intro from me, I'll definitely turn it over to uh, Kevin and we can get an update uh, on that side and then feel free to, uh, to come back to me. And I'll, I do have some points that I wanna definitely talk about today about, uh, about the burn. Uh, that element, that's something we really haven't talked too much about. So definitely want to talk about that as far as the uh, project purchases of Fisk and subsequent burns and um, all that good stuff. So looking forward to it. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kevin. Thanks, Phil. Uh, as you mentioned, it's such a big month for us. Um, the wheels are really spinning here on our ends. We're getting a ton of work done and um, as we need to, to move forward towards launch. So. I'm going to give you guys kind of an overall update about what we've been working on here on our side. We're, we're super excited uh, in terms of operations, marketing, and dev side. So I'll hop into operations. Um, I kind of wanted to start the conversation today around um, a recent large crypto hack that happened in our industry. Um, the tune of $325 million was lost in a wormhole. Uh, attack recently within this past week. It's been huge news in the crypto community, and it's really forced us and our compliance team to sit back and ask the big question of, you know, how do we make sure that this doesn't happen to Fiscus? Right? We need, we're need. we here to protect you guys, and that's my role, um, to protect the community from future hacks. So what we've done internally um, to combat this is we're starting to really ramp up our security. Uh, it's becoming a primary focus for us. And the way we're doing this um, is through the goal of pre-launch audits in terms of penetration or pen testing, uh, having external third-party firms coming in and uh, reviewing all of our code and trying to find vulnerabilities in our system. Um, and these are people from the outside, so they have no interest in Fiscus, and that's what we want. We want that independent uh, audit. And our goal is to get that done before the launch. So we want a full code review and a pen test. And these are, again, these are kind of how we're combating these security issues that's happening in, in the industry. Because uh, it's really is intense stuff, right? Um, and we're working our butts off over here to make sure that uh, you guys are protected. And again, we're doing that through pen tests, through pre-launch audits, through code testing. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit later uh, about our new idea of the audit committee. Um, that will involve members of the community. Um, an additional protection of security is we're going to third-party vulnerability scans as well. So these are, um, these are softwares that are scanning vulnerabilities. They're kind of the base level. Uh, the real, real security issues will get solved with those pen testing in the code review. Um, so with that being our other issue we see is identifying if our Fiscus DAO needs to be registered as a security. Um, with recent laws and regulations, they, there are certain DAOs that have to be registered. Now, our team qualified for an exemption, but we still have to file that. Um, and just in case, just in case we don't qualify for that, we go to the and registered. So there's no roadblock that we're not going to overcome um, in terms of getting to our launch. Uh, and just as a final note on the compliance side, the reason we're doing this is it's because it's crucial for us to cross all our T's and dot all our I's on our end. Um, again, just protecting the community. Um, so with the uh, bridge of connecting the, uh, protecting the community, what we've done um, is improved our communications with the admins of the community this week. So we've got some open communication lines now with some of the Discord admins in the community. And the main purpose of this is to introduce them into our conversations and involve them directly into the action. 
And that way they can come back to the community and relay to you guys exactly what's been going on um, on a detail-oriented level. And this is a, this is a two-way bridge as well. They're also bringing feedback in from the community that you guys have provided, some brilliant minds in our community. And you guys are providing great feedback for us to, um, to feed off of. So we've opened these lines of communications with the advent, and we're working really closely with them. We've already had some great conversations with them um, about the community and some of their concerns and how we can alleviate those. Um, so at the end of the day, the more that the admins know, the better that they can answer your questions and the flow of communication uh, really improves within the community. Um, so we have so many valuable resources and minds in this community, and we plan to utilize uh, all their skill sets. So that's the over, overall um, update on, on the operations side. Uh, in terms of marketing, our shift is now focused with the launch date coming up into website improvements and the pre-launch platform itself. Um, so we've made, uh, current, we've made recommendations to improve the current website. And um, we've actually started bringing the process of bringing on an additional resource that will focus directly on social media and online media marketing for um, this year. And we're, and we're planning to bring this resource on as soon as possible so we can get some pre-launch marketing done as well. Um, we know that we want to market in platforms like Twitter for the social media. That's really important for a launch um, as well. Um, in terms of, of, again, bridging the gap with admins, we met with the, with the admin earlier today for our marketing team, and we got to discuss some ideas um, on the different levels of who we're going to market to. So, you know, marketing to people who are experiencing crypto versus people who are retail investors versus people who are noobs in crypto, and, and how are we going to approach and how to market them in more community. Um, we got to share some images that, that this uh, admin has created. Um, we got to uh, discuss a lot of different aspects of marketing. Um, and overall, I thought it was a very constructive meeting, and we're building off this and bouncing ideas off each other. Uh, so again, just utilizing Twitter and other main media sources as the uh, launch approaches. And uh, again, we, we appreciate all the feedback that we're getting from the community. So in terms of the dev side, um, the UI, the user interface, has been drafted out now. Um, we've shared it with some of these internal admins. And what we've done is we've sent it to our design department, and they're going to pretty it up and uh, add some design elements to it. Um, so we're expecting the UI images to be presented within the next week. Um, again, we've already been circulating the rounds with some of the admins, and we're just printing them up on the design side. Um, and then this gets to kind of one of the main topics we discussed earlier with security is how do we increase um, there is uh, how do we increase uh, transparency in the community while increasing or while reducing security risk. Um, so we've been wondering how much of the information we're going to share in terms of source code and different things like that that's still being discussed internally. But we've come up with some ideas to make sure that we're increasing transparency and reducing security risk. Um, so we're an idea of that is forming an audit committee. Uh, audit, audit committee and having trusted members from the community. Uh, we're, we're determining right now what the criteria looks like, but we encourage people to apply who have an experience in the physics community, but also have experience with analyzing code and, um, and different things like that. Um, so um, in terms of the dev contract, they're working right now um, on finalizing those contracts. I know the test contracts have been done um, and they're just waiting to be QA'd. Um, in terms of an overall update, that's about it on my side. I can pass it back to Phil and he can start answering some of your questions. Sounds wonderful. Thank you for that, Kevin. Um, also, this did this week a little bit different for sure. Want to make sure that we got a lot in print. I know obviously we'll have some, uh, we'll have, you know, audio transcripts of this and, and audio for those that listen in on, on Saturdays, like a lot do in the mornings from what happened on Fiscus Friday. So definitely feel free there. Uh, but I did go through and, and in coordination with, with some admins and, and then also some of the core team and made sure that we got 
those AMA questions kind of fully answered and in print, uh, really so we could kind of dive in and, and those follow-up questions, because I think sometimes we may lose the follow-ups uh, when I'm just answering kind of the, we're just answering the questions that are there. And then, you know, obviously a, another question may come from that instead of having to wait a week to get that other question answered. Um, you know, feel free to, you know, look over uh, those answers to the AMA questions and be able to post new questions. And then we can have some have some good feedback and some good back and forth. There's things that come from community. And I think that highlights what uh, what Kevin's already uh, uh, talking about as far as the uh, the role of of our admins. I love our admins. And, and I think the aspect that is so incredible is that they came from the community. Again, these are not individuals that were known, and yet the impact on FISC will be known from this point forward when we look at the role that so many of you have done in talking about FISCUS on Twitter, in creating uh, uh, different uh, Q&As and recaps and, and all of these things. This is what FISCUS is truly about. You know, when we get back to it, you know, there was a question that was in one of those AMA questions that talked about, you know, um, uh, some of the things that we would need for launch and, and what we looked like and how, how good it looked. The point everyone needs to always remember is that Fiscus could exist purely off chain as a, as, as a company that, that individuals would see and have no part of. And so because of that, our threshold to performing or an activity is that it's already done. That, that part is, is, in a way, it's, it's always been the simpler part. Uh, what, we, what we're doing is doing it in a new place, right? We're taking our talents to, to South Beach, if you will, with South Beach being on chain. Uh, and so we're obviously thrilled to do that. You know, the team, where we're headed, it's, it's, it's really just undeniable at this point, you know, from a risk perspective, you know, we, we have so many bases truly covered and are always on the hunt uh, to close up any bases that may not be or may not be as much. And so because of that, we, we look to the community. You know, we want everyone involved, truly. You know, and in the grand scheme of things, if, if far into the future, if we only had a thousand members, a thousand fiscalites, and, and everyone was active and, and fully involved, that would be a beautiful community. Uh, and so because of that, please just always kind of keep that in mind whenever we compare our structure and our launch and our, our even our processes to a large degree to that of others. You know, we're in a, in a vastly different, different place. Um, and one element of that that I just want to highlight, and this, this is in the, uh, in the liquidity, liquidity squeeze thesis, which will, um, and it would say thesis to, Kind of make it more of an academic paper, but it it, it definitely is not. You know, it's not uh, it's not something that's experimental uh, in the sense of of experimental in, in what we're doing by any means. Um, but we say that just to highlight the uh, maybe the level of thought that's been put into it and these certain elements that that we know are absolutely new. Uh, one element that, and again we. we had a good legal review as well. One element is the is the burn. Uh, something that we didn't talk about a lot. Long time ago, what feels like years and years ago, November the first, um, you know, in the in the initial tweet, you know, whenever we were trying to frame Fiscus for the crypto community, we talked about, you know, Fiscus having the the scarcity of Bitcoin, right? the um, the APY of, of OM and the burn of ETH. Uh, that burn element is, is something that we really haven't discussed too much of. We, you know, from a, from a protocol perspective, you know, there's obviously two varying camps as far as the burn goes. Uh, what we've created, I feel like, is something that will be mimicked uh, if in as much as possible. And that is what, what we refer to as a, as a third-party burn. Uh, and so in, in a nutshell, we, we are able to influence both supply and demand simultaneously at no cost to the Fiscus Treasury. 
And that is by this. And this is because of obviously Fiscus funds now, now being that, uh, that conduit, that buffer between us and projects. So therefore, we're gonna, projects have, will have two components and obviously Fiscus funds takes care of this. There's an ROI that will go to the treasury as, as we've always stated and said, that holds true, hasn't changed, won't change. That's the core of Fiscus. Separately, there is a purchase of Fisk. Now, in, in the past, we've always talked about that purchase of Fisk, uh, you know, for those initial projects. And this was before really, really finalizing Fiscus funds. And that purchase, they would own that Fisk and they would have that, uh, let's say, it would be released back to them in a, in a two-year time period. And, and it would be a gradual release so that it wouldn't impact the, uh, impact the price of Fisk too much at that point. Uh, create too much volatility and so forth. Um, happy to announce that the tokens that are purchased by the project participants will be burned. Uh, now, what what does that do, and and what type of a burn? We're not talking about just a revert to the treasury. We're talking about an actual burn. Um, so, and I, I say actual, actual in the in the on chain sense. Um, those in doing that will reduce the supply of a fisk uh, at the same time because they have to buy the fisk at open market to turn around and then burn we're also um, benefiting the from on the demand side of fisk and so we see this really as allowing us not only that that rapid price appreciation that that is the goal and is the point uh, but it's 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 just great for the protocol you know, it gets us to the point where, one, a stabilized treasury is the goal. Uh, a, a decrease in, in price volatility is, is the goal. And then above all things, and, and we've said this time and time again, price appreciation, right? We need token price appreciation. And that has a direct influence on the value of the treasury and on the growth of the treasury and on the uh, on the growth for for all fiscalites uh, and that is excuse me there that is the point uh, so very happy to announce that excited for everybody to be able to dive into that mechanism we consider that kind of the fourth leg on the uh, on the liquidity squeeze and so now that that's been signed off excited for everybody to see that and read that and to get in great conversations about it uh, because again, that's something that uh, if if someone else has seen that out there in that regard, please DM me about it. Uh, it's it's something that that we feel is is absolutely new. I mean, if 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 you were to think about it in these terms, imagine finding a a and I think I respond to a post in a similar fashion the other day. Imagine finding a a a whale, right? A, a crypto whale that that loves your project. And loves your project to the point where uh, they're going to buy a, a an amount of <laughs> amount of your token and ever increasing amount because as the treasury increases, so does the project size. Therefore, so does the amount of of uh, fist purchased in fiat to be burned. Right. So in, imagine having a a participant that buys an ever increasing amount of the token and burns it. Um, and is is given nothing in exchange. Uh, there, there is no, you know, there's no quid pro quo. You know, they receive their financing. Nothing outside of that. You know, it's not as if they they have, you know, access or or control or governance or any of those elements. Uh, and so again, that's something that uh, we're very excited about. Has not been done, um, and uh, and we'll really you know, take us past uh, past the moon and ideally land us on, on Mars or, or maybe even somewhat further. So excited to talk about that. And let's get into additional conversations with that. And I'll give it back over to Kevin. And I look forward to hopping on and uh, answering additional AMA questions. Uh, we are Looking at, at a whitelist, if I could talk just briefly, I guess, about whitelist, that's our that's our next thing up. Obviously, those before that, those that have uh, have not received your, your PFIS, please follow the directions of, of, of Dhoni and the admins and mods 
you know, making sure that uh, that if, if you are going through that appeals process, if there's an issue or if there's anything like that, please, you know, I adamantly ask that uh, that you come forth and, and get that. We don't want anyone that's uh, that's an OG member to uh, to not have their 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 tokens, not have their peace fist. That is that is theirs. Uh, anybody that has any issues with wallets, anything like that, just let us know. You know, we, we truly are here. We're here for you and here to here to assist you in, in every way with regards to that. Uh, with the whitelist, we are looking. Um, and I, I, I say this, I say this lightly, but I'm going to say it. I haven't, I haven't spoke too boldly, I think. I, I'm not trying to be as timid, but I try to stay away from from things that we haven't ironed out yet. But we are looking, and this was one of the AMA questions at, at the whitelist commencing this next week so that we can do LBP the following week and obviously uh, launch commencing after that. Uh, again, the, the reason why and, and the reason we have these abilities is that, remember, by having this kind of diverse team of, of not only of devs, but of operations and of, of marketing, you know, it gives us the ability to, to tackle two things at once with one team really kind of leading things forward on, on the LVP side and another aspect of the team moving things forward with the whitelist. So we are we're cooking with grease, as they say, in, in the southern part of the United States. So thrilled about that. With that, I'll turn it back over to Kevin. I wish everybody a, a phenomenal Fiscus Friday. Perfect. Thanks, Phil. Um, we're absolutely thrilled here to be working on this great project, and we got tons coming up um, this next few weeks as we hit February. Um, so just thank you all for uh, coming out today to the AMA. Um, stay safe and have an absolutely fantastic weekend. Thank you.